so so much for Mr. Kenton Pratt. And I keep it going for Annie Shepherd helping him out. And no applause necessary for this one. My name is Ryan. I'll be narrating. Unless you want to. Okay, yeah, I secretly, not so secretly, really do love it. Thrive on it like Tinkerbell. So love the applause. We love your enthusiasm up here. Keep it up. Sometimes we'll reward it. So stay tuned for that. Now getting started, Kenton has taken a gather of molten hot clear glass out of our gathering furnace. Holds about 150 pounds of clear glass sitting at a temperature of 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 11 degrees Celsius. And we keep that molten glass hot for pretty much a good two years until we need to replace the crucible that's holding our, our hot glass. So that is standing nice and toasty up here all the time. Now Kenton quickly started colorizing the clear glass by rolling it into some crushed up glass color. We call this frit, F-R-I-T. The frit sticks right to the surface, just like ice cream sprinkles would stick to ice cream. And he's able to melt it back in, maybe roll twice, building up a stronger color density. And here he is introducing an air bubble. So blowing it to the end of this iron, you see that slight expansion, expansion occur. And that's glass blowing, folks. We have a bubble. That's all we do here. That's the end of the show. Carry on with your day. We just make one single solitary bubble and send you on your way. No, we're not making ornaments up here. We like to have a little bit more pizzazz. So this is literally just, just the beginning of the fun. So we call this the starter bubble. So from here, all things are possible. Whether we're making a little blue cup, a, a bowl, a vessel, a little sculpture. Kenton is known for his dinosaurs all throughout the land. So, um, so I bet we'll see a T Rex maybe at some point this cruise. He hasn't made one yet, and we've been kind of saving the best for last. This is actually Kenton's last cruise with us. He gets to go home. Aw, yeah, everyone should be very sad. We're sad. We're sad to see him go, but he's got other fun things to do, like visit South Africa. And, build a glass blowing studio, so lots of fun. Now Kenton wants to make a bigger piece of glass, so he's gathering more clear glass on top. That is how we get more material on the end of our blowing iron. We have to add it in layers, because the hot glass is very similar to honey when it's over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's impossible to gather all you need at one time. It just kind of dribbles right off itself. So he's evenly distributing that clear glass around his colored bubble underneath using this cherry wood block that's been soaking in water. So it's waterlogged. The glass is actually riding on a cushion of steam generated from the hot glass, kind of touching that water. So shaping it up and gaining control over this molten gather. Now from here on out, Kenton will never really stop turning this iron. Because if he did, either the glass would drip right to the ground just like honey dripping off your spoon, or it would get off center. You'd be making a very crooked bowl or whatever you're making. So we have to keep it centered, just like uh, kind of channeling your human blade. So always constantly turning with his left hand. You see, it's always very busy. Using one of our favorite tools, and it's so crazy, he's just shaping this hot glass with newspaper. So using some paper that's been soaking in water as well. This is just maybe 10 sheets of the New York Times folded up and soaked in water to shape and cool that glass. Now the glass does cool down very quickly, so it goes from being molten to solid very fast, especially if you're being outside of a heat source. So constantly throughout the process, you'll see Kenton going to this furnace here and getting this glass nice and hot. And even when the glass is no longer moving around, he'll still go into this furnace to maintain a temperature above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, the glass will crack apart. Now, Kenton just dropped his bubble into an optic mold. This mold has these vertical triangle ridges running right down it. And he blew his bubble into those ridges and got this great texture on the outside. And he'll maintain that texture throughout the rest of this piece. It'll greatly influence how this bowl will eventually open up be able to feel the texture on the outside. Now serving his inflation, it does not take much air pressure to inflate your hot glass bubble, but your glass does still need to be hot. So
still needs to be moving around. It can't have cooled down too much. So probably less pressure than you would use to inflate a party balloon. But that's just an experience at play because we're working very fast and has been blowing glass for more than six years. So he'll make this look very easy, very fast. He's not wasting any time. He's always doing something with the glass. Otherwise, the glass gets too cold and you're doing nothing with it. Now he's starting a restriction line right off the end of the iron. This line will be very important because eventually he needs to remove this glass from the iron. So he's essentially making a score line where the glass is thinner and fitting that diameter. Just like a line in a bar of chocolate, you snap a piece of three, we'll be snapping the glass at that point when we're ready to flip it around. Now the tip of the bubble will end up being the bottom of this bowl. So we always work on the bottom of the vessel form first. And when we're ready, we'll flip it around and work on the top. So Mustafa will add a little flat spot, just like this wine bottle here. This is how we prefer our wine bottles. And um, that's just what we do here. We make the, the glass the appropriate size for our consumption. So, but you see, nice flat spot. Um, we can also add feet to our vessels as they're about to do right now. So Annie's taking a gather of the clear glass. I know it's glowing orange from that radiant heat, just like lava. Going up with it, and Kenton will drop it. Whoa, he'll catch it right on the bottom of the bubble. And this will become the foot. So while it's still much hotter than the blue optic bubble that he has, he'll start shaping it up into the foot. Just that fast. Now, we have a lot of show times this cruise, and our shows are always at least two hours long. So in that two hours, we'll either make one very special piece of glass that we do once this cruise, or we'll make six pieces of glass, or three. So it's always different every single time. We kind of view this as a beginning glass blowing class that you have unwittingly signed up for. Congratulations, you are now glass blowing students. Because beginning glass blowing is all about endless demonstrations. You watching the process and kind of soaking it up like little sponges. So we'd like for you to come back and we'll show you uh, as much as we possibly can in how we can shape and make different forms with this molten material. So we definitely love for you to come back. We'll never make the same piece of glass twice and that's a promise. Now Andy has gotten started with making our transfer putty. We have to flip this around. So she's making a little temporary handle to do so. Uh, shaping it very specifically, kind of like a pointy egg. And bring it over at just the right temperature. They'll attach it right to the center of the bottom of the foot that Kenton just made. Now hot glass sticks to hot glass. You'll have already noticed with the addition of that clear foot. So we use that as a tool. Now this is meant to be a temporary connection though. So eventually we do have to remove it. So the temperature is absolutely critical. Otherwise this optic bowl that Kenton has started will fall on the ground at this point. So very crucial to get the temperatures right. Sticking it right on there, turning in unison, and then Kenton will become a master glass breaker and cause the glass to break at that restriction line he made in the very beginning of the process. He's just blowing air on it at this point with that Sophietta tool. Glass boy is all about temperature control. So here he is using a diamond file, scoring that restriction line, a couple drops of water on the glass, and a tap on the iron. And if all goes well, it'll pop right off. And it did. The crowd goes wild and it's great appreciation. Well, we'll work on that. Okay, so, <laughs> one to merit. No, I have to explain. You will not startle us if you make noise up here. We actually thrive on it. And the more enthusiastic you are, the more we may potentially reward you with free glass. How does that sound? Yay! Oh, you want to win some free glass this cruise? Yes? Okay. Well, the way we'll do that... <laughs> what? Sea glass? Okay. Make some sea glass, throw it in the water, go yeah. home the next day. Yeah. No, we're not going to do that. Anyway. So, what we'll do is during our shows, we'll randomly pass out raffle tickets and and hold little glass giveaways and give away most of the glass we make up here. Uh, we are a not-for-profit museum, so legally we're not allowed to sell the glass that we make up here. We can't just make it and then put it in the gallery stores downstairs. We know it would sell out, but it's not part of our programming. So we will give away most of the glass 
and we'll also have an auction at the end of the cruise. So that's the only time we accept anything monetary for our glass, and it is for a couple charities. So we'll do that on the last day. We'll save the best seven pieces that we make and raise money for that. So Kenton has opened this up into a nice bowl really fast. And he's going to be changing this bowl quite dramatically without touching the glass at all with a tool. So he'll focus the heat. He'll focus the heat, turn faster and faster, and the glass second, rip it open using centrifugal force, charming beard and good looks, and a little gravity. Yeah, we like that. We like that enthusiasm. Quickly opening this up. Now, we immediately have to put this away into our annealer oven. So we have this black box here with all the glass that we make. We have to slowly cool it down. And that's to prevent it from cracking into a million and one pieces. So we'll cool it down from 900 degrees Fahrenheit, about 500 degrees Celsius. It takes about eight to 12 hours to cool it down. After our afternoon show we'll have later today, we'll start that process and cool all our glass down. So you can always come back the following day to see the glass that we've made at the shows prior. So little drops of water on that punty. We need that to release. Andy's ready to catch it. Comes right out, nicely done. Into the idea where it goes. The first piece of the cruise. It's a fast one. That was a good 11 minutes. Nicely done, Kenton. Kenton Brown, ladies and gentlemen, they are so easy. So just the beginning. So we're gonna switch it up. We make lots of pieces on this first show and we'll also have a show this afternoon from three to five. So Annie will be up next donning her Kevlar sleeve. She wears this to protect her arm, her forearm from the radiant heat that comes off the glass. So sometimes you'll see us wear that. Kenton's not wearing one, he's got his sweatshirt on. He doesn't usually wear one because he is part dragon. So he thinks that he can't burn. So we're gonna switch it up and we do encourage you guys to ask questions. I know we have a lot of information to throw at you first thing. So um, if at any point you do have questions, no matter how small, we'll definitely uh, encourage encourage you to, to ask them and we'll answer them. Thank so, you. So switching it up, hydrating. Any, any questions while we transition so far? Anybody wondering anything? When do we get the raffle tickets? When do you get the raffle tickets? Well, let me tell you something, sir. You never get them when you ask about them. So you just spoil it for everyone else. No. Uh, it's true. It's a true thing. So randomly, when the wind is coming in by the north, by east, by south, or west, and really only we know when that is. And But it's based on your enthusiasm, for sure. So yes? Oh, that, oh, oh does Kenton need a bad joke point? Yeah, yeah, he does. Oh, she's, she's already, have you played this game before? No, she just knows. She's very smart. We do have a scoreboard, and I'm going to let Kenton explain about it because he does it very well. So here is the man. You, you are giving me all the points. So the the way our board works, so we do have a, a scoreboard up here. Every department on the ship has what they call a wig board, which stands for wildly important goals. And we were actually the first ones to start our wig board. We started this back, uh, I think it was in the end of July or beginning of August. I actually wasn't here for it. There was actually another a ton, another team, three other glass boards. So we don't all get on at once together. So some people think that we travel the world together going glass, and that's not how it works. So about, Every month or so, one glass floor is getting off the ship, another one boards again. And at the time, there were three glass floors, Meg, Celia, and Kim. And Celia had a lot of really bad jokes. She thought she was really funny, and she had all these jokes and wondered why no one was laughing. And so Megan started tallying. It's a little tally on the side of the board about when there were bad jokes. And then Kim, it was her turn to narrate. Her turn to explain what, what we were doing with the process that we were making. And then so she started firing off as many bad jokes as she possibly could. And then Meg's like, well, shoot, I thought we were Developing. Maybe we're bowling and just not really sure what we're doing. And then it's kind of just grown from there. We have all different kind of categories now. Um, last cruise, our sass category also turned into the Grinch category. So you guys, as you start getting a little bit sassy, we'll, or Grinchy, we'll give us the points for that. If you guys start getting sassy with us, we'll give you guys, we'll write you guys up on the board too. Um, the other, other category that people get in a lot is the classy and fancy. So anytime that you know you guys go to um, Sunset Bar, and then bring, you know, one back one for the glass floor which you get to be on the class and fancy board. <laughs> All right, nice. Any other questions before we start making the what Annie's doing? Can you make something orange? Can I make something orange? Everything's orange. Did you notice when it came out of the furnace? <laughs> no, so everything is 
Uh, your furnace does look like it's glowing orange, and it's just because of how hot and how the heat it is. But of course, we can make orange glass. We have our color card over here that has tons of different colors. This is a nice opal orange color that we can add onto the glass, so rolling through that for it. Uh, but Annie's actually not doing any of that. She's actually got something a little bit different for us. Um, I think I have an example, a similar example. This is a, a cup I actually made a while ago. Annie's going to be doing something similar. She has all these red vertical lines on the outside. You don't mind what's in there. It's a little film wash off. We'll explain that later. But so she's going to do a little bit of decoration. She's already gotten that started. Uh, she actually preheated a chunk of glass in our little pickup oven. So this little box over here is actually an oven that's at 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this is another piece that I'll have to show you guys. This is a piece of Annie glass screws. And so I think she already used the one for this cup, but she'll actually be using the scrap of the, uh, we make this piece, we for the scrap of color. We'll be making more of this. This is called Caneworks. We have to come to all of our shows to see some of our other pieces. That's what she has right now. She actually picked up this chunk of, of what was scrap, what would, would, would have been trash glass. And picked up onto a pipe. And that's actually going to be her starter bucket. That's what she's going to be using to uh, make a little cup out of it. Be a little, little check of lines all the way through it. But a lot of people ask us, do we recycle all of our scraps? So it was uh, you know, the book pipe that we I put away. That's what actually the thing that you guys just heard a little bit ago. The glass is starting to break and crack off. And people ask us, do we recycle that? And we actually don't recycle any of that glass up here on the stage. Just because we did have some of that green blue glass on it. Um, if we were to put that back into our furnace, it actually contaminate the entire pot. And so in our furnace, even though it does look like it's going orange just because of how hot it is, it is all just clear glass. But because we don't want to, of course, color uh, all these different colors, or as we start mixing all the different colors, we have this really weird, awful blue-gray color. And so we have to keep the purity of the clear furnace. So we can continue to manipulate and use all the different colors. Um, so we're like going to our color scraps. We will occasionally have a separate bucket up here that is just clear glass in it, so we can use just clear glass and the scraps from that. We will actually recycle that uh, back into our furnace. But all of our color scraps, it does get recycled. It's not here on the stage. We actually give it away to a construction company that crushes up into what we call aggregates. And they add aggregates to the asphalt and paint on roads, but they're actually slightly reflected at night. And so it does get reused here on, on this stage. Nice. So here Annie is. So she's got her bubble established already. She popped a little bubble into that colored scrap piece of glass, and then going and gathering another layer of that clear glass. So again, it is looking more Here she is, she actually is going to go ahead and recycle some of that clear glass. This is what we would call a strip gather. And so, to make, she's just, I've been saying she's making a cup, and then so when we gather glass on the furnace, we always end up about twice or three times as much as what we do anywhere. And so, we do a, a second gather of, gla of glass over water bubble. It would have been too much. She wouldn't have ended up with you know, a little cup, she would have ended up with you know, a giant. Uh, monster glass, which sometimes we like to do. Ryan makes her her glasses so she can fit a whole bottle of wine in them. So yeah, she goes, she can go out night and yeah, yeah. So she's going out. She goes, I'll just have one. Yeah, one one glass of wine a day. Um, so, but Annie is, you know, not New Year's Eve yet. <laughs> we're almost there. <laughs> oh yeah, we're still coming for our Christmas party. That's true. Nice. This is actually still going to be a pretty decent sized cup though. We got, yeah. Nice. And the brandy is, the tree is starting already blowing and plate it, shaping it up with our different tools. Right to be a really great assistant right now. So you see she's actually grabbed our tools called the jacks that we put that construction line in. And she's actually heating them up and then rubbing them in a little bit of beeswax. And so uh, we always have to preheat our jacks just because the metal tools will give us more working time. So as the, all those metal tools, actually it will absorb a lot of heat away from the glass very quickly. Which right now Annie's potentially doing. You can see she's touching mostly just the very tip of her glass bubble. And so there's still a really thick mass of, of glass on there. And so when she blows and plates it, the glass will always inflate where it's hottest. When she's cooling up the tip, it's going to plate up closer to the top of the blow pipe. And then that's where we want to put the constriction line in there. This is a really you know, consistent process that we'll do through throughout all the whole tire crews. So all the pieces we make is we always need to think about that constriction line at the very beginning of the process. So we need to put that in there so we'll have a way to take it off later, because I'm sure we've all broken glass before. And there's not really a way to predict what kind of where the glass will break, what kind of shapes are shards, how many pieces will break into. Except for this, this is actually one way that we can actually control where, when, and how that glass is going to break by putting this little constriction point. Because it's actually creating a weak spot in the glass. And so then we, later when we will focus all that attention on that weak spot, it will in fact break. 
And that's one of the first things that we think about when we're making glass. Where <coughs> Danny is making a beautiful base or a really nice cup, uh, and then you know, really designed it, something really specific, and worked over a long time to make the shape that she was working on. And then said, oh, I need a way to take this off the blow pipe. I can cut into this constriction line. Uh, she had to get all that glass really hot again, really fluid, close to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And so to do that, she would melt out and ruin the shape that she'd been working on for so long. So I know I've done that before as a beginning glass blower. You're so excited about making the most beautiful base that you possibly can, which of course isn't that possible since so you're just beginning, just starting out. But you, you, you're so proud of it anyways. Uh, but so you always put that friction line in before, then blowing up the, the bottom, the, the other part of it. So that's what they're working on now. So Ronnie is actually providing the air pressure to inflate that glass. And then Annie has the jack plates on the outside. So she's keeping this, uh, she wants to make a nice cylinder cup, so rolling it on the side, keeping that nice shaped cylinder. So that glass at the tip heats up, gets hotter, and starts going inflating. And so you see that even when Annie is reheating the piece now, it's actually changing what she's doing. She'll do these quick short flashes deep inside the reheating chamber, then bring it out. So that most of it is just focused on the very tip of the bubble. So that jack line's outside the reheating chamber, so she's actually intentionally letting that cool down. And for a glass board, a thousand degrees is actually really cold. That's the temperature that the glass stops moving around. It becomes pretty stable, pretty stiff. And so we we're constantly coming up to, to reheat the glass, but also to control it uh, by where and when that glass is hot. We call it glass blowing, but it's more, much more about shaping and about heat management. Do you Annie know that she still has a, a good thickness of, of glass at the very tip of her bubble? So she's having Ryan blow a little bit more through. You might be able to hear her give Ryan instructions. Blow, blow lightly, blow harder. Stop, please. And it's a, yeah, sure thing. So there's, certain, there's a, also a certain thickness that we think about when we're making our glass and want things to be kind of Quarter inch or so, and so and it's waiting to blow in a plate to there. And then I'm actually going to jump in and help out as well. So it looks like Annie wants to make a perfect, nice cylinder with a nice flat base on this piece. Of course, we don't want to keep this going to wobble around, so we always have to make things that are really flat, especially on a cruise ship when it's realistic like this. And so I'm going to jump in as well. So we'll get the running, and you're going to do continue their job, and we'll come on outside with the, the jacks. I'm going to grab a wooden paddle and actually just press on the bottom a little bit. Ryan again provided the air pressure on the inside, and so the three of us together are pushing and pressing this glass to make it a nice cylinder shape. Nice. So there she has her nice cylinder. And then Ryan cannot go make a punty. Again, a punty just being a, a little bit of glass and then the solid iron. Ryan's actually going to use our, our smallest counterweight help down to have the weight for the glass on the other side. And then notice the way that she makes this honey. So typically when we come out of the furniture, you'll see us actually angle down so that glass stretches off the blowpipe and it's usually glass. So with the honey, you just want a very small sliver of glass off the end of that pipe. So by actually rolling forward, pressing it, angling a little bit, so it kind of just have a full little dome of clear glass off the end of that pipe. And she is also technically cooling it down. Where say that little bit of, of clear glass I added onto the foot, we brought it over right and hot fresh from the furnace. So that 2,000 uh, piece of glass fused onto that bowl that I was making. Where this putty, we don't want it to be a temporary connection. We don't want it to be permanently fused on it. So it has to be hot enough that the pieces are going to stick together, but not so hot that it's a permanent fusion. So it's we actually are making this connection to actually fail. So we are controlling how long they'll actually stay together and how long they'll be attached. There we go, going touching on the tip, rolling them together. And of course, adding drops of water onto that glass. So the water is, of course, going to cool that glass down really quickly. The glass doesn't like that. So get out of the water. Yeah, there you go. Turn that nice out. Nice. You guys need to go grab a beer or something, help you guys get a little more rowdy during our shows. You guys are welcome to the Sunset Bar. was right there, just for us. Oh yeah, we had Bloody Marys from there the other day. That's the direction that was nice. Nice, so now we can flip this piece around. So earlier she had tension on that jack line cooled down so it was nice and stable while she worked on the bottom. And now she's going to do the opposite. She's going to do these little short flashes deep inside the heating chamber to keep that honey warm so it's hot enough to that thousand degree threshold so it's not going to crack the break. So both these things, both of it just like the top. So that area is going to be heating up and going to be plating or getting hot. She's going to be working it, so scraping it. Okay. 
so this is always the longest reading of the process. So since I, we have the uh, glass cool down to that 1,000 degree temperature, we now have to build that temperature back up close to that 2,000 degree heat. The 2,000 degree temperature is that glass is nice and that's nice and soft. And so you, at the beginning of glass, it's really hard to lose the patients for this particular the process. They're so excited, one, that it actually survived the transfer, but typically with the first year or so, you probably break at least half your pieces at that, ton at that honey transfer. So you have to really get used to just like letting things go. If you're like, okay, well that's broken, let's just start all over. And then, okay, that broke too, so let's do it number three. And then, you know, later the day, like, all right, number 36, let's see if we get this one really on. All right, so building up that temperature, making sure that honey is going to stay nice and safe. And she began to pull in on the, the edge of that lip a little bit, the lip of that cup. And so it looks like maybe that she's planning to trimming some of that glass away. Because any time we put that friction line in there, it's going to be a little bit thicker right there. So we like to thin those out for our, our drinking glass so that cups a little more comfortable to drink out of, a little bit classy, a little fancier, as you do. Nice. So there she is getting some more heat to build it back into it. She might pull and squeeze on that. So a little bit more, get a little bit stretched out. And then grabbing a pair of shears. And a lot of people are always kind of shocked and surprised that we can actually cut through glass. And as long as it's hot enough, and just by trimming, all those tweezer marks away. And so it's kind of a, a weird thing to do. Beginning glass viewers are always really scared to do that. I know I'm actually still not that great at trimming, trimming especially compared to Annie and Ryan, just because they're a lot more brave about it, a lot more experienced with it. I mean, you have to move really quickly. You have to get all the way around that full circumference of glass where it might not look like a very big opening, uh, but you have to get pretty far. And so your fingers are only a few inches away from that glass. You might have saw Ryan was actually, uh, one, trying to protect Annie's fingers from the heat, but also as that glass kind of curls around, you don't want it to kind of curl back and touch Annie's hand either. And so you have to be really careful and train. And it also feels kind of funny. It's kind of like cutting through a really hot piece of leather or a garden hose or an orange peel. Only it's about 2,000 degrees there. It's a little different there. Nice. Now we got to straighten that back up again. So anytime you cut glass, you can leave a sharp edge. So we've got to reheat that, melt out that sharp edge, and kind of just touch it very lightly with a wooden paddle. So it kind of to straighten out just a little bit. We'll make sure it's perfectly parallel with the bottom of the piece. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And he's dreaming about the, gin, uh, the vodka sodas that she's going to drink on this later. Nice. So this is another really fun tool. So we actually can inflate the glass and the like, the transfer off the glow glass. This is a tool called a sofietta. It's an Italian word uh, that means little breath. And so by actually just pressing that cone onto the lip of the piece, it's going to seal and trap all that air inside. And by going into that tube, you'll increase the volume. And so you can have a much larger gin and tonic than what you'd otherwise be able to have. And that's always important for large of the glass. Uh, before you're able to drink out of it. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks. So Annie has some more plans for decoration. She's not going to open this up to just a straight tumbler. She's actually going to have Ryan go ahead and start Another little bit, another additional glass. So I'm going to jump in and I'll provide the paddle. Make it work. And nice. So coming on both the inside as well as the outside with her jacks. Kind of straighten up. Make a nice straight cylinder for a cup. But Ryan is actually making a, a handle, a bit of glass for a handle that we'll make. And so she's gathering up some material. Annie has put up some red glass that I think she wants the handle to be in. Listing, furnace door open, does it at once. And so if you guys have missed it before, uh, this is how we add the color. And so it's just crushed up little pieces of glass with metal oxides added into it. And so we're adding just a little bit of that red glass on the outside. And we can do a few layers of this to kind of decide how dense or transparent we want that glass. In this case, it's actually a really nice opaque coral color red. Nice. And Annie went ahead. And ask Ryan to go and do this before she finished opening the cup, just because Ryan or Annie knows that it will take a little bit of time to, to gather that glass, roll it through that color, heat it up, and then shape it up into a handle that we would like to make. Thanks. So give me one coat going for a second. And then Annie just going to get a little bit of a holding pattern 
while we're in Trisha's edition. And I think I heard Annie say that she's can actually have Ryan make a very special kind of handle, what we call a Roman handle. Uh, Annie actually made this picture at last cruise, and it's so see these kind of vertical lines are kind of compressed into that handle. And this is what it defines that Roman handle. And so the Romans, of course, were making these handles. It's very popular when ancient Romans are blowing glass. And they would actually do these handles. Uh, one, because it was you know, really good and decorative. Addition is really nice and really beautiful handles, but also because they didn't have a really fancy electric machine that was just totally cool with glass shop. They would actually dig a big, big pit, a hole in the pit in the sand, and then um, bury the first piece of the day that they would make in that sand. The sand would actually insulate and keep the, the glass warm, let it cool down slowly, and kind of spill it up. So the next piece would go on top, more sand on top, and the following. And they found that these Roman handles, which is this is how we add those additions, Ryan just grabbed a pair of tweezers. Compressing those lines on the marble table and then going back into the oven for a quick flash. And they found that these Roman handles are actually much more likely to survive in the milling process. So the glass cools down too quickly, it will crack and break. What? Do we sell these? No. So we have a big party at the end of the cruise at Sunset Bar. We all get drunk and then we throw all the pieces overboard. Because we're not the top of the museum, so we're not allowed to sell them to the work. I always try to get Ryan to say that. She'll at the beginning and she never likes to. She always likes to say that what we actually do with the pieces. Oh, she, oh, she left. All right. Well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she'll be disappointed. She doesn't That's get a raffle like ticket. Nice. Right, so here we go, making our handle, curling it around, touching it down. And so she's doing quite a lot of things very quickly. So you saw that she had to flip that around 180 degrees so it wasn't going to drip on the side of her piece. She had to pull it back, touch it, curl it around. Touch it down, beautiful handle, definitely deserves a giant round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Nice. There were there were several things that Annie was thinking about during the process. So again, even when we cut glass, even when it's at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it will leave a sharp edge. And so that really fancy curl that she does at the base, she's doing it one, because it looks nice and it's spiral, but also because it buries that sharp edge inside all that mass of hot glass. You're not gonna pick up your gin and tonic or vodka soda and cut yourself. But also she has to move really quickly because that glass cools down very fast, especially a red glass. It's going to be a little bit stiffer. It's going to cool down and then if it's not hot enough, it won't touch back. It won't stick onto the side of the piece and you'll have to, a broken handle before you even finish your cup. So you do have to move really quickly. But nice, here we go. Looks like Annie's already finished and ready. Ryan's going to grab these pair of forks. She preheated them with some radiant heat from the furnace. Again, adding little drops of water into the punny, but being very careful not to get any on the actual piece. The only one on the punny, otherwise you would, of course, break and break this beautiful cup that Annie's made. Little tap breaks right now. Ryan will carry deliver this into our kneeling oven, 900 degrees heat blasting. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Nice, beautiful cup. By Annie Shepard. Okay, so you guys were probably wondering, so that handle, you can see as Annie's pouring that red glass back into this ice jar, uh, it looked really different while it was hot. So you guys will actually have to come back and see the pieces that we make, because the colors actually do change from the heat of the glass, they actually will look much brighter red tomorrow. So we can kind of keep you guys coming back so you guys can see our pieces when they're actually all the way finished and not the display. So these are all pieces we made last cruise, and after a few days we'll have all new pieces out. Every day we'll have a new piece of glass being made. But nice, so Ryan's gonna get started. She's already put up some colors that she wants. And so we're gonna switch up here in just a second after Ryan or Annie finishes hydrate. Yeah. Sorry? Where's my sheet? It's downstairs. You were here last cruise? Oh, okay. Well, it's actually downstairs in my room. So, good. Uh, I'm glad you asked. So, uh, last day of last cruise, I made a sheet. Uh, I'm an avid knitting fan. I knit all my own socks. I knit my hat. I've gotten these two girls knitting. And so, Annie's. Almost done. She's about halfway through her first hat. Ryan's finished a few. Uh, working right away. And so, uh, you're being in uh, New Zealand. So last cruise, we went to uh, New Zealand. We left from Auckland, south, south New Zealand, stopped by Hobart, and then we took around the city, of course. And so, it being my, my last New Zealand cruise where I've been buying tons of wool, I thought I could finally make a sheet. Annie kind of making some really cute sheet. And so, she kind of not really all the neatness. And so, I did that. I made a sheet. And I did charm so it's like this. And so it looks kind of weird and funky and possessed. But what I'm doing is I'm making a little pair of socks. So it's cheap as I'm knitting a little pair of socks. So I'm, I, I have to start making, making the socks the right size for the, for the sheet. 
Uh, but nice. Andy looks like she's hydrated. I'm going to pass up the mic to her. Did you knit that beanie? Oh, sure. Sure. We don't know maps. Quick enough. 
player or two until she has the proper amount of glass. So kind of repeat the same process. We're not any piece that we make, we're just building up those clear layers, um, sort of like uh, rings on a tree. Just add another one, let that cool, and if we want to continue to add, keep on going. Now the colors that Brian used, um, we're having a little bit of a reaction with each other. We'll see that later on after this has expanded a little bit and cooled down. Uh, but throughout the entire process, these colors aren't going to be in their true state. So we've been working this glass well above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice. Yeah, about two, three times more glass now. Really glad to find that pattern. Yeah, when that glass is hot, it's going to look good. Cooling down and 
Ryan has a moment to 
real flames. So all of our equipment is electric, which means we don't get to use any of our specialized torches that we have back on land. So normally we wouldn't add that little patch of glass, but out here, it's a nice little thing to do. All right, a few drops of water on that construction line, and a half of
pattern in glass. Yeah, that little rib at the top. Ryan likes to use it for this sort of flower-like effect she puts at the top of some of her pieces. Well, we have quite a few different prints. Uh, some have the shell or fan-like pattern on. Great for making fish. Uh, a leaf-like pattern. Thank you.